So there's been a lot of chat out lately about young royals, particularly in the Swedish speaking and Swedish learning world. People want to learn Swedish so that they can understand season two of Young Royals when it comes out. And honestly, I welcome anything that encourages people to learn Swedish. But I have one piece of bad news and two pieces of good news. The bad news is that if you want to learn to speak Swedish, you're going to need more than Young Royals. It's just not a long enough show for you to become fluent in Swedish just watching that. The good news is that one, you can learn to speak Swedish. I've done it. And two, you've come to the right place because in this video I'm going to go through not eight, not nine, but ten series that you can use to help you become fluent in Swedish. Now for the shameless, and I do mean shameless, watch time optimization. I have spread various tips throughout this video how to get extra material like way more stuff than just what I name in this video. Just stuff. Just I can't name it now obviously. You're just gonna have to watch the whole video. So don't just go through and write down the list of series that I mentioned. If you don't have 12 minutes to watch this whole video, how are you gonna spend two years learning Swedish. Did you ever think about that? Nah, they ordered in the Who is some helst? Nu kör vi. Number 10 on the list is Bruan, aka The Bridge. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been around quite a while now. Now for it to even be on the list is to say that it is beneficial to Swedish learners. There's quite a lot of it. Four seasons. The Swedish in it is good. They tend to talk about a lot of the same things. Some of it's very, very clear. I definitely think that it can be beneficial to Swedish learners, but 40% of the show is in Danish. And the Danish in the series is... Danish? Jag vet inget om Kerstin Ekvall. Eller några lik på bomen. Måske du bara inte vet att du vet. Number nine, Snubber Kush. Snubber Kush is a recent one that really surprised me. I liked it a lot more than I expected to. It's not higher on this list because it's going to be really tough for a beginner or even an intermediate student. There's a lot of slang and sometimes so much so that it barely even sounds like Swedish. To put it simply, I wouldn't recommend this series to anyone who can't read a novel in Swedish. I watched it recently, I didn't find it challenging, but I probably would have if I'd watched it even a year ago. It definitely would have been a struggle back then. Now in case you're thinking, well okay great, I'm going to learn to speak real Swedish as it's spoken by real Swedish people, but I live in not Sweden, so who could I even practice with? Well, I'm glad you asked, because this video is brought to you by italki. As important as it is to hear and consume a lot of Swedish, it is a whole other thing to learn to converse, to answer how your day has been, to answer someone as to why you're learning Swedish, which is something I'm very experienced at. And for that, I have italki to thank. I've been using italki since before I was making videos about language learning. I live in Australia. I have never been to Sweden, but the level that I have now in Swedish is in no small part due to the consistency that italki helped me to build. When I first started, I was lucky enough to hear about italki very early on and to start making friends who were Swedish, who would keep me accountable with my Swedish. Like we would speak every week or so and I didn't want to be that guy who hadn't improved at all during that time. So it meant that even in this thing that it was hard to see immediate progress in, I just kept doing it every day because I wanted to get better. And in the normal language learning online space like apps and whatnot, Swedish would be considered obscure. Most apps don't have it, but on italki there's currently around 60 teachers. So it's not really surprising that italki has teachers in over 150 languages. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of languages. Some teachers are simply native speakers and language enthusiasts like us and love to share their language with people all over the world. Others have some kind of formal qualification in teaching language or even a formal qualification in teaching a specific language. For example, two of the best French teachers that I ever had were actually Serbian, which made me want to learn Serbian. And with italki, I could have. I didn't, but I could have. With italki, there's no subscription of any kind. Your account is free, so you're not paying anything in those busy times when you can't fit lessons in or whatever. You only pay for lessons that you book, and you're booking one-on-one -on -one lessons. You're not going to be in the lesson with like three other people, one C2 student and one A1 student. No, it's just you and the teacher. And there's also a completely free community where you can share your stories, your experiences, post material in your target language to be corrected, ask questions about the language or a dialect or a culture, or just generally expand your knowledge of whatever you're interested in, or just language and culture in general. The italki language challenge has also begun, but it's not too late to join in. It lasts until mid-November. And I must say, I always get pretty full on during the language challenge challenge because I don't like seeing people's names higher than mine on leaderboards. It represents weakness. So you can sign up for italki completely for free using the link in the description. That way they'll know that it was me who sent you and they may even let me do this again. Thanks 
to Italki for sponsoring today's video. So moving on, at number 8 we have Stuch de Valt. If you like Young Royals then there's a decent chance that you'll like Stuch de Valt, known in English as Quicksand. It's a good mix of different registers of Swedish, different kinds, like very formal and very informal. But again, for beginners it's going to be very tricky without subtitles. So what I'd recommend, and this is one of my bonus tips, is to watch each episode once with English subtitles and then again either without subtitles or with Swedish subtitles. And then if you're really keen you can go back and watch the whole series again, no subtitles. Klaus var väl i bästa fall nykiltig mot Sebastian. Och i sämsta fall. Han kunde säga och göra helt vidriga saker. Number seven, Drapnestet. If you've heard of the show Dragon's Den, Drapnestet is just the Swedish version thereof. You can watch it on SVT Play as long as you have a Swedish VPN, and it's a good one to ease into the no English subtitle world because you can get the gist of what's going on even without being able to understand anything at all, and you don't have that temptation to turn subtitles on because on SVT Play there are no English subtitles. And if you don't know what SVT Play is, well, you're welcome, because SVT Play is a massive catalogue of upcoming and just generally new and relevant shows, stuff that people like to watch in Sweden anyway, because that's who it's made for, all for free and almost all with Swedish subtitles. If you're learning Swedish and you haven't used SVT Play, then... Vad gör du egentligen? Saras nyfikenhet. Vilken underbar dialekt du har, vill jag börja säga. At number six we have Kalifat. Now you've most likely heard of Kalifat because it was featured in my internationally renowned short film Immersion, which by the way you should watch, or just maybe you saw it in your Netflix recommendations, but let's face it, it's more likely that you saw it in my film. It is not a series for the faint-hearted, but Aliette Oppheim is probably my favourite Swedish actress. It's just an awesome series. Number five, Vår tid är nu. This is a really, really, really good show that I stupidly did not take the opportunity to watch all of while it was on SVT Play, and now the problem of where to find it is both mine and yours. But if you can get a hold of it, there are four seasons, so it's really long. It borders on soap opera, but much, much, much better than that. The only thing to watch out for is that it's set in the 50s, so it is 50s Swedish, but it still works. It works totally fine, and if you find out where you can watch it, tell me. Number four is Uptrag Mat. Now, Uptrag Mat is technically a YouTube channel, but the uploads are pretty consistent and so thematic that I think it can count here as a show. It's on YouTube, so you can just go and watch it, but don't expect it to be easy. It's not made for non-native speakers. It's made by Swedish people for Swedish people. Don't expect to be spoon-fed. Fantastiskt gott. Fantastiskt gott. Skulle jag få det här på restaurang så skulle jag ju vara jättenöjd. Nej! At number three, we've got Björnstad, or Bear Town in English. Björnstad was another surprise for me. I really didn't like the book at all, but the series was a huge improvement, and it was also featured in my short film, which you should also watch. Did I mention that? Yes, I did. Just watch it. And after you've watched my short film, watch Björnstad. And again, Elliot Oppheim. Need I say more? What do you think? I'm sorry. And number two, we have Bornus Familien. Full disclosure, I don't like the series. Yes, there are some really funny moments, but I just couldn't continue with it. I didn't watch all four seasons or whatever there is, but the Swedish in it cannot be questioned as beneficial, especially for beginners. It's very representative of reasonably normal situations in Stockholm. Says he who's never been to Stockholm. Eller hur? Värsta ädd i rummet! Ja! Yeah. Fan, här ska vi ha våningssäng. Och så ska vi ha, du vet, man kan ha skrivbord och myshörna med tv. Now, after number one, we won't quite be done because I've got one more tip to give you a whole world of stuff in Swedish, none of which I've named here. But speaking of Stockholm, number one on the list because of the quality of the dialogue and the interactions in the show and just the engagement that you will have with it because it's such a good show is Kärlek och Anarki. This show is hilarious, sad at times, gives a good insight into Swedish culture and they are currently making a season two. It has everything. And if you don't trust someone who's never been to Sweden, which I can totally understand, Lana Blakely, who lives in Stockholm, named it in her top five shows. Great show, probably worth watching for anyone, but worth watching a few times if you're learning Swedish. Also, have I mentioned my short film? Because it was also in that. Kulturmänniskor kan ju vara så jävla känsliga. Ja, exakt. Så vad vill du ha för någonting? För att radera det där jävla fotot. Ja. Now I promised that I would tell you how to get heaps more material in Swedish, so here's how you do that. 
This list has all been shows that are natively in Swedish. That is, the actors in the show speak Swedish, it's not that hard to understand. But in Sweden, as a rule, with very few exceptions, anything that's a foreign language, i.e. English, is not dubbed into Swedish. So you can't watch other stuff in Swedish, like say Seinfeld or La Casa de Papel. You're stuck with whatever languages that's already dubbed into. But what you can watch is material that is theoretically meant for children, like say CG animations and cartoons. As as long as you can convince Netflix that that's what you want and no, it doesn't involve a VPN. Instead, you simply create a new profile and you tell Netflix that this profile only speaks Swedish. You're only interested in things in Swedish. So now within your ordinary account, you have a profile that is essentially a Swedish speaking profile as far as Netflix is concerned. So suddenly all the CG animations like Despicable Me and Kung Fu Panda and cartoons like The Dragon Prince will have Swedish audio as well as Swedish subtitle. And this actually works for all the languages that I've tried it on. So especially if you're learning a less common language like Finnish or Croatian, this is game changing. It essentially means that you could go full ASAT if you know you know, and still not exhaust all the spoken Swedish material available just on Netflix. So good luck in your Swedish learning. Remember to use the link in the description to create your italki account. Leave me a comment, and if you're not going to go and watch something in Swedish right now, which is what I recommend you do, then at least go and watch one of my videos. Obviously, nasta gång. Hej.